Survive and kill the killers in Area 51. I'm pretty sure this game doesn't need an introduction at this point. I've been playing this Roblox game for around 7 years, and I'm sure if you ask the average Roblox player, they might assume that Sanctic is just one of those simple cash grab Area 51 games. And my goodness, if that is you, you couldn't be more wrong. And even though some of you in the audience right now might be thinking that you know everything there is to know about Sanctic, every killer, every weapon, every location, heck, every single mechanic in the game, well, that's where you might want to re think your logic. So that's where this video comes in. Welcome to the official completed definitive Sanctic Iceberg, made by me with the help of several community members. And if you don't know what an iceberg is, or you've been living under a rock, then sucks to be you, I'm not explaining it. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Basically what icebergs are is that they're a list of information about a particular topic. This one being the Roblox game Survive and Kill the Killers in Area 51. The top of the iceberg has general well-known common knowledge stuff, you know, things that probably everyone and their mum would know by now, but as the iceberg descends downward, the information gets more rare and less known. And yes, I am aware that I did make another Sanctic Iceberg once, like like two years ago, but not only is that video horribly outdated, but most of the entries on it were just straight up garbage and just jokes that just made the iceberg not fun to commentate on at all. Like, Call of Duty Zombies copied Sanctic, yeah, sure. But this iceberg is different. Everything on this list is 100% real, or at least has some element of truth to it, so no stupid entries or anything like that. Also, I will be talking about some things that were in the original original video anyway, to save you time having to, you know, watch it and listen to my pre-puberty voice. Okay, listen, 2021 was not a good year for me, okay? But anyway, that's the introduction. This video might be a lot longer than my usual Sanctic video, so I hope you all have some snacks ready. But for now, let's all take a deep dive into the ultimate, definitive, and hopefully last, Sanctic Iceberg. <laughs> Homo Mafia 1. Homo Mafia 1 is the lead developer and creator of Surviving Kill the Killers in Area 51, and while Sanctic is certainly his biggest Roblox game by far, he has worked on some other projects in the past such as Humans vs Zombies, as he's been on Roblox since 2014 and he's been developing for the platform ever since. But uh, yeah, if you didn't really know who Homo Mafia 1 is already, then uh, maybe this iceberg isn't for you. Although not too much is known about the guy, I've spoken to him a couple of times and despite English not being his first language, he's a pretty cool dude, definitely one of the nicer Roblox developers out there. Also, I know he's watching this video. Hi Homer, what's up? Invincibility Star. The Invincibility Star is a removed item that used to be in Sanctic that was replaced with the Landmine Game Pass in 2020. What the item did is that when you used it, it made you invincible from damage and allowed you to kill any killer instantly for 30 seconds. Pretty broken, maybe you can see now why it was removed. Of course, when this change happened, a lot of Sanctic players got incredibly upset over this, and they're still going to this day, begging the developers to give them a refund for the item that they originally paid for on the infamous Braindead Home of Mafia 1's group wall. Like, imagine if the Invincibility Star was still in Sanctic today. Killer Mode would be even more unplayable than it already is. I mean, you could just use the star, kill everyone at spawn, reset, use the star, kill everyone at spawn, reset, it just would not be fun at all. Also, it's possible the item was removed due to, of course, the star itself being a direct copy of the Mario star owned by Nintendo, and we all know how nicely Nintendo treats people using their property on Roblox. But regardless, the Invincibility star will for now go down in history as probably the most infamous removed and overpowered Sactic item. Underground Base. A lot of people know this fact already, but I'll quickly skim over this one if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But basically, the original Area 51 map was not actually created by Homo Mafia 1. No, it was made by this guy, Icy Fresh, and the map's true name is actually Underground Base, not Area 51. The map itself has been stolen and copied so many times at this point, much like many other old Roblox horror games, which explains why there are dozens and dozens of Area 51 games all over Roblox with the exact same map template. And this is actually how Sanctic came into existence. But no, in short, Sanctic is not the first Area 51 game. Far from it, actually. Sanctic Test Servers Sanctic Test Servers are a direct copy of the main Sanctic game published on Homo Mafia 1's group. Like the name implies, the game is mainly used for testing upcoming updates, new features, and other things of that nature. Now this entry is dedicated to all of the people in my comment section. Most notably the people who come to my videos, see a Sanctic update, assume it's in the main game, go, go to the place in the main game, uh, the update's not there, and then call me a hacker and dislike an unsub. When it's just in the Sanctic Test Servers, it's, it's not in the main game. 
just just read the description, do your research. Currently, at the time of recording this video, Sanctic test servers haven't updated in a very long time, but if you want to go check them out for any future updates they might have, I'll leave a link to the game page in the description. The Dying Noob. This refers to the name of the dead person that sits in front of Slenderman's cage in all of the modes besides Storming. Nicknamed the Dying Noob by the community, they don't do anything besides utter the words, do not open this door. And in fact, the Dying Noob is believed to be the leader from Storming. Well, I mean, come on, it's pretty obvious. Although the Dying Noob didn't always look like this, in older versions of the game's thumbnails, they're shown as just a... A regular guy, I suppose. But yeah, the Dying Noob, whatever his or her name is, holds a special place in Sanctic's history and probably always will. MG42. Definitely one of the most popular game paths within Sanctic, the MG42 is pretty much essential for anyone who wants to play this game competitively or seriously. When you buy this game pass, you'll get the exclusive MG42 weapon whenever you join Classic, Killer, or Storming mode. You can even find it around the map in Juggernaut, or even buy it in Slenderman's Cage in Endless Survival mode. But yeah, it's only 30 Robux, definitely worth it, and I'd say it's only really beaten out in terms of value by the Energy Drink game pass, for the following reasons. Energy Drink 100% the most popular and overpowered Sanctic game pass of all time. If you have the Robux to spend and are playing Sanctic at all without this item, then just what are you doing? But yeah, I think we all know how this item over here works. I mean, you take a sip of it, you regain 75% of your HP, you get the drill. However, it's worth noting that in Juggernaut you only get two sips compared to the usual four in all of the other modes, but it's still an insanely powerful item. And if you're thinking of buying or spending any money in this game at all, this is the game pass to go for. I mean, it costs the same amount of Robux as the landmine. I mean, come on, what would you, what would you buy, honestly? Papers. Papers are items that you can find around the map in both Classic and Killer Mode. They don't offer much content or value in-game and only purely exist to add to the lore and backstory of Area 51. The stuff written on the papers ranges from everything from survivor's tips to lore about certain killers, and there are 13 in total to collect. If you want, I'll leave a wiki page in the description that lists them all and where to find them. I have to say, for someone that doesn't play Classic Mode that often, some are a fun read, although others are rather boring. Obtaining the crossbow. As most of you hopefully know by now, to get most of the guns within the Sanctic mode, you have to look for them around the map. Unless you have the VIP Game Pass, of course, in which it gives you all of the guns pretty much immediately within Classic and Killer mode. However, there is one weapon that works a bit differently to the rest, and isn't even included in the VIP Game Pass bundle, and that weapon is the crossbow. The crossbow is unique in that you have to complete the Kill House parkour in under 45 seconds in order to be able to receive it in each of the modes. But it doesn't really matter anyway because the crossbow sucks, it's like the worst weapon in the game, I mean there's like 12 arrows that you can use and then bam boom you're done, you have to go back to an ammo box and the arrows take a bajillion years to explode, well I mean it is a free weapon so it makes sense, but like the VIP game pass is only like a couple cents, like a real world money, and then you get all the guns for free, so I'm not sure why you wouldn't use those, but you know, if you don't have game passes, I, I guess you could use the crossbow. It's definitely very strange. You can't even get the crossbow in either Juggernaut or Endless Survival out of the mystery box if you don't meet the requirements to obtain it. Kind of like finding the MG42 if you don't have the game pass. I mean, it's not like the parkour is hard or anything. It's just strange. And I guess it does give you a reason to play Kill House mode. Atomic Bomb. By far one of the most well-known locations within Sanctic. The Atomic Bomb is found in the radioactive area in all of the modes, and if you go up to it in either Classic or Killer Mode, it gives you a free badge, although nobody really knows why there's an Atomic Bomb in Area 51 to begin with. It's definitely the cause of the radioactive area existing, as stated in one of the papers found in the location, but what else? Is it sentient? Did it give life to the zombies? What about the giant? Or maybe it has connections to the ray gun? Nobody really knows, but hey, at least now you know how to get a free badge if you didn't already. Menu Screen Music one of the Sanctic menu screen's most defining features is the music that plays in the background. And if you sit there and listen to it for long enough, you'll realize that it isn't just one song on a loop, but three. And you can even arrange which music track to play in what order to your liking. One of the songs is a remix of Winds of the Jords, a well-known classic Roblox song, while the other two are Lunatic and Scent of the Night, composed by the artist Mayu, I think that's how you say it. Although it's worth noting that Mayu did not create these tracks exclusively for Sanctic, rather they are just royalty free music that Homer borrowed instead. Fun fact actually, these three songs were decided by the community in a poll held in Sanctic Discord by Homer Mafia 1 himself, so technically whenever you go into Sanctic, you're listening to music that the community likes, or the community decided on, so that's pretty cool. 
However, there is a fourth music track within the game, titled Strolling Around, also by the previously mentioned Mayu. However, the only way to get it was through completing the Vicious Quest badge in Halloween of 2022, so it's since unobtainable today. Sanctic vs Sanctikia 51 The debate over the true way to pronounce this game title has been the cause of several arguments within the a Sanctic community in the past. See, see there, I just did it again. Some people, like me, prefer Sanctic. It's short and easy to say. Although some people will instead use Sanctikia 51, which, you know, it's fine. I use it in my video titles after all. This is something that I believe you can really make up your own mind on. One of the loading screens mentions that both are valid, and since the loading screens were written by Homer himself, then yeah, this mystery's been solved. Silent Kill on Earth. The Silent Killer Badge is one of the hardest, if not the most challenging badge to obtain in Sanctic. To get it, you need to win a round as the Juggernaut with 12 people on the lobby, and be on full health once the round ends. It's certainly not easy. The nerf part refers to the fact that in the older versions of the game, you literally could not take any damage at all. Even if you healed all your HP back up, as well, whenever a Juggernaut kills a player, they regain 20 HP, of course. I'm very glad this was changed that now you just have to be on full health once you win, you can still take damage, it's made getting Silent Killer actually possible due to how good the player base has gotten a Juggernaut over the years. Compared to back then, where nobody really used Shift Lock, the gun locations were on like 4 spots, and nobody really knew what they were doing. Ah, the good old days of Juggernaut, am I right? Killer Case Files, one of the few collection elements within Sanctic. The Killer Case Files are items that are rarely dropped by killers within classic modes with an estimated 5% chance. The Case Files themselves don't do anything besides providing facts about a said killer, the amount of times you killed them, as well as their origin and background. Interestingly though, there are some Case Files that work a bit differently, such as bosses for example. Bosses always drop their Case File on the 100% chance. Well, except the giant zombie, but he's not really a boss is he, he's just a... He's just a big guy, he's, he's not a boss. Or even Jane the Killer's case file, which she drops herself whenever she kills Jeff the Killer, since of course weapons do not effectively harm Jane, so it makes sense why this is the case. Get it? Case? C case files? Eh, whatever, let's just move on. Call of Duty Zombies References Within Sanctic, there are many references to other games and media, the most prevalent of these being Call of Duty Zombies. For example, the ray gun and all of the sounds associated with the weapon are taken directly from Call of Duty Zombies, the whole endless mode is based off of the round system of Call of Duty Zombies, and there are many, many more examples. I'll leave a wiki page in the description if you're interested to know about all of them. But yeah, I think it's safe to say that Homer is a pretty big Call of Duty Zombies fan. Can't say I've ever played the game myself though. Execution Room The Execution Room is a small hidden room that you can only open with the golden key found in the teleporter office room in both Classic and Killer Mode. Of course, you get given the badge once you enter for the first time, but what is strange is what's inside the Execution Room. There are many torture devices present such as electricity lamp and random chains hanging below a surgery table. What's odd is that the fact that this room has existed in Sactic for the longest time, and nobody's really questioned its existence. I mean, even when Law get added to the game, the Execution Room remains. I mean, what's its purpose? Well, okay, its purpose is pretty obvious, you know, killing people. But who? Soldiers? Killers? Uh, intruders, perhaps? Nobody really knows. It's worth noting though that at one point there were even more torture devices in this room, such as a guillotine, an electric chair, and it even had a full on dead person in the room. More information on that later down the iceberg though, so stay tuned. The Way Out the Way Out is a classic Sanctic Easter egg that has been in the game since nearly the beginning. To get the badge, simply go back from the main area, enter the small soldier hangar on the left of the exit, jump down the trap door, and you'll find yourself in a small, dark, ominous room along with a pop-up reading, Game Over. From here, simply walk into the You Are Trapped sign and you'll find yourself in a tunnel. Jump over a couple of pits of death and a few very easy to avoid spikes, and you'll reach the end. Bam, boom, you're done. Although this badge used to be really annoying to get, nowadays it's super easy to obtain. Like, almost too easy. You can get it in like 30 seconds with a YouTube tutorial. It's not really known why the way out was added into the game in the first place, or why it's even still in the game. It doesn't really seem to fit with anything else in Sanctic, but hey, it's still here. Sactic 2. 
Sanctic 2 is or was a fan-made Area 51 game that was created by Homo Mafia 1's friend Portal 1, now known as SB Portal as an unofficial sequel to Sanctic. What set Sanctic 2 apart from the main game was having a huge map with various locations, many, many different types of killers, and all different references and hidden easter eggs here and there. Around the time that Sanctic 2 came out, I think around 2016 or 2017, the main game, or Sanctic 1, was still pretty much a baby. I mean, there really wasn't much to the game, so of course Sanctic 2 attracted a large audience to it. Most notably, the people who found, you know, the main game boring, you know, it didn't have many updates, wasn't getting updates. Wow, things haven't changed at all in the past seven years. However, as the months went past and Sanctic ultimately got better with the addition of new modes, killer pathfinding, and overall a gameplay experience that was just more enjoyable than Sanctic 2's and less buggy, the game would eventually be set to private by SB Portola sometime around 2017 or 2018, effectively shutting down all access to it. But that's not the end of Sanctic 2's legacy. Things get a bit messy around this point, but here's how the story goes. Sometime during the shutdown, SB Portola handed over the game files to a guy named General Punctuation, to be Sanctic 2's new owner and creator, and the game was republished, although this didn't hold up forever. And of course, through many Roblox updates and changes, Sanctic 2 eventually broke beyond repair, and sees only a few players visit it each day, compared to normal Sanctic's massive player count. Sanctic 2 is a perfect example of where you try and push quantity over quality in a game, and due to the lack of updates, it ultimately falls beyond fixing it. And although Although I will praise the ideas the game has going for it, and I did make a standalone video on Sanctic 2 a while ago, at this point it's just another piece of Sanctic's bizarre history, and nothing more. I'll leave a link to the re-uploaded game in the description because, well, some of the stuff in the game is quite creative and definitely worth a play. Hate and Rage. Hate and Rage are the two substances that possess and control the boss Aberration and her Corrupted One minions, the black stuff being Hate and the red glowy stuff being Rage. According to Subatomic Sam, the creator of Aberration and the Corrupted Ones, Hate is the substance that gives them life, while Rage is the substance that quote unquote gives them purpose. It's not really known what Sam meant by this. Does Hate enable the killers to control Rage? Does Rage give Hate the ability to be controlled? I, I, I don't know, it's still a mystery. and we don't don't really have enough evidence in game to explain any of these theories. However, there is also a paper known as Paper 12 within the Wendigo Area Computer Room that goes more in depth into the backstory of Hate and Rage, referring to Aberration as Subject B, and how the effects of Hate are supposed to wear off after 14 months. Due to how Sanctic is most likely set years after Air 51 was abandoned and how Aberration is still being possessed with Hate after we fight her in boss rush mode, I'd say it's pretty good evidence that Rage was created to prolong the effects of Hate. But why was it created? And who created it? Well, that's still a mystery. The Storming Aliens. The ultimate secret is one of the most well-known badges in Classic Mode. Find the randomly generated 5-digit number around the map, put that code into the code machine, and BAM, you find the alien killer and get a neat little badge for your troubles. Again, just like the way out, we probably all know how to get this badge. I mean, it is required for the Area 51 personnel achievement after all, and I'm sure many of you have probably got that by now, so there really is nothing special going on here. What's interesting about the Ultimate Secret badge, though, is its description, stating that the alien is the first ever killer of Air 51. And, well, that can't be true because Alien doesn't appear in Storming. And, of course, if you've seen my timeline video, it's that Storming is the first mode in the Sanctic story. Well, okay, good aliens appear in Storming, but they never attack you like they do in Classic Mode. But it's not really known why the alien appears in Classic Mode and not Storming Mode. I mean, clearly we free all of the aliens within, you know, Storming Mode. We didn't miss any. There weren't any rooms that we didn't enter, so why does the alien appear in classic mode? Well, nobody really knows, you know, a bit, bit of a continuity error right there. Little side note here, but a lot of people don't know this, but it's explained within Alien's case file that the reason why Alien is hostile in classic mode and not storming mode is because Alien in classic mode has been brainwashed by a Russian spy during the Cold War. I don't know. It's two conflicting sides. You can either agree with the banter that the alien is the first killer and that it was missed during Area 51 storming, or you can go against it. But it's certainly something to think about. 
Grizzly Reminder. This entry refers to the original main menu music that was in Sanctic before the three tracks we mentioned earlier were made to replace it in early 2022. The song that was used was known as Grizzly Reminder by Midnight Syndicate, and the main reason why it was changed was as a response to Roblox itself nuking many, many copyrighted songs off its marketplace. And although it's probably never going to be added back to the game, sadly, it's still worth a listen if you're in for some nostalgia. Trust me, you can just find it on YouTube somewhere. The Vault. The Vault is a small room found in the prison area of the map, and can be opened with the use of the keycard item found nearby in most of the other modes. And ever since the room was added alongside the Endless Survival update in late 2018, people have been asking for some type of killer to spawn inside it, since in both Classic and Killer mode there's nothing present at all within the Vault. And I mean, it's not difficult to see why, I mean, why does the Vault exist anyway? Why is it in the prison of all places? Maybe it you know, holds a prisoner inside? I don't really know. Like, why would you put a vault in a prison? That's kind of the last place that you'd want to store valuables, you know, next to loads of criminals and stuff. Or maybe the prison is for, like, like, like killers. That, that, that'd be kind of cool, actually. Eventually, though, the vault was given a purpose. In Endless Survival, the R870 spawns inside of it. Yay! Oh, well, all we can do now is keep praying, I suppose. Maybe one day. Soft locking the Juggernaut. There's a strategy within Sanctic Juggernaut that you can do as a survivor that, if done correctly, completely soft locks the game and makes it near impossible for the Juggernaut to win. This strategy involves either waiting in the main hall or cargo area until you spot the Juggernaut, run away from the Juggernaut in a circle around both locations and closing the doors behind you so the Juggernaut can never effectively reach you until the time runs out. Yeah, this strategy is as unfair and horrible as it sounds. And trust me, it happens to me all the time. In fact, that's why I stick to small servers in Juggernaut nowadays. You know, whenever I go into a large server, you know, I become Leatherface as Juggernaut, you know, I kill everyone, but there's always that one guy that sits in the cargo area and runs around the main area and the, the cargo area like 50 times in a row, and I can't win because the Juggernaut just isn't fast enough. The Juggernaut still needs a speed buff, okay? I'm gonna just buff the, buff the Juggernaut speed. It will, it will fix everyone's problems. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some ways to counter these methods, such as closing the doors behind you as Juggernaut, or maybe the survivor can make a mistake and close the door on themselves, but you usually have to get lucky or have a ton of skill to get these nailed down. But yeah, if you're playing Juggernaut mode at the moment, just don't do this. Thanks, you're doing the game a great deal of good, you know. You could sit in the cargo area, you know, wait for the Juggernaut, but just don't run around the area 50 million times, it just slows down the game. Fan art. Fan art has been a staple of Sanctic since basically the beginning. The game's thumbnails use fan art, and you can find fan art pictures around the map. There's not really too much more to this entry besides this fact. I'm just glad the devs and Homer appreciate the work that people go into drawing characters for the game. And hey, fun fact, I draw the Sonic fan art in like 2019. It's gross and ugly, and I wish someone replaced it, but hey, it's in the game, I guess. Killer Gender. Now we all know that most of the kills within Sanctic have confirmed genders, like most of the killers taken from the media, like Michael Myers, Granny, Slenderman, those are obvious, but there are some that are more obscure and aren't confirmed, like Alien, The Kraken, Zombie, and possibly even Wendigo I've seen be referred to as a she. Although this could just be down to an oversight, like in Alien's case file, he's referred to as an it and a he, I don't know, again, doesn't really matter, you make up your own mind on these. Survive in Area 51. Survive in Area 51 is another Area 51 game created by the developer Penguin Doc 9999. It focuses more on the weirder side of Area 51, adding strange new dimensions, unique killers, and challenges with an entirely original map. And it's in the background of my videos all the time. See, right there. I actually even made an entire video about Survive in Area 51. That will explain why there is a black and white image of the game just just chilling there forever. It will always be in my room. For as long as I do YouTube. In fact, Penguin Doc even asked Homer Mafia One if he could make the game. Also, he commented on my video, so that's epic. But yeah, if you're looking for an Area 51 game that updates more often than Sactic and has a cool community, then maybe this Area 51 game is for you. Go give it a play. Link in description. Back to regular Sanctic for the rest of this iceberg, though. I promise. Zombie spawning mechanics. Most of the kills within classic and endless mode in Sanctic only spawn one for each. For example, there can only be one Slenderman alive at a time, one Wendigo, one Jason, etc. But there's one killer that follows different rules to all of these. That one being the zombie, in where up to three of them are allowed to be alive at any one time. Five if you include the Captain Zombie minions. I think this mostly comes down to the lore behind zombies. I mean, in the case file for the zombie, it explains how the zombies are like infected employees. You know, of course, there's going to be more than one. What, 
infection only affect one guy? But if they are infected employees, how can the previously mentioned Captain Zombie pull them out of thin air? Well, nobody really knows why, but what's certain is that the zombies are unique when it comes to spawning properties. The Raygun Parkour The Raygun Parkour is a removed location that could be found at the end of the mineshaft area in previous versions of the game. The location displayed a set of bricks, forming a parkour area in which when the player reached the top, they could get the Raygun. Of course, now this gun location has been switched with the MP5K gun location, and the parkour has been replaced with a simple elevator. I'm actually really glad this change was made. Sure, the ray gun was OP, but was it really worth the whole parkour segment? I don't think so. But putting it in the radioactive area, though, probably wasn't a good idea. Humans vs Zombies I briefly mentioned this earlier on the iceberg, but Humans vs Zombies is another game that was made and created by Homo Mafia 1, around the same time he was still working on Sanctic. It's a round based game, which puts of course, you guessed it, the Humans vs the Zombies. It does also share many similarities with Sanctic though, such as the art style and the background ambiance is the same. I'm not going to go too in depth into Humans vs Zombies here since it doesn't really have much to do with Sanctic, and it's not being developed by Homer anymore, but if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. Beneath the Surface Speaking of Homer's old games, another pretty famous one is Beneath the Surface, an Air 51 story game completely separate from Sanctuk. Yeah, even before storming was a thing. Like the Sanctic 2 game we mentioned just a bit ago, Beneath the Surface is very much broken. Like, so broken you can't even beat the game. Yeah, the end cutscene just breaks. The story of Beneath the Surface revolves around you being trapped in Area 51, being tormented by the same alien that you can find in Sanctic being held in Rake's spawning room. And honestly, it's pretty cool seeing what we'd assume to be a background character given a new life. The game is also pretty weird, like it kinda just does whatever it feels like doing, that being random ghosts appearing out of nowhere, big holes to the void for no reason, and ugh, the laser stage. Although I'd say it's worth playing Beneath the Surface at least once, it's a step back in time for sure but nothing beyond that I'd say, it's not that special. The Voltage Room The Voltage Room is another mysterious room within Area 51, that unlike the Execution Room that we touched on earlier in the iceberg, appears in all of the modes of the game. Well, all modes located in Area 51, yeah haha, <laughs> trying to be smart are we? The only thing that you'll find in the Voltage Room though, is of course some kind of electricity machine that if you turn it on, instantly kills any player or killer that walks into it. There's also a separate button to open and close the translucent door that leads into the machine. Like the Execution Room though, nobody really knows why the Vulture Room exists in the first place, what lore it holds in the game, and why you'd ever want to go there in any of the modes. I mean, its whole function is to just kill you. Like, wh why is that a benefit? But obviously it has some reason to be here, it's even a gun location in Juggernaut, but whatever that proper reason may be is shrouded in mystery, at least for the time being. Out of Bounds and Anti-Cheat Yes, Sanctic does actually have an anti-cheat system, and although many people may not know how it works or the full capabilities of it, one pretty well-known way to stop exploiters and hackers is that if you go out of bounds in any Sanctic mode, you'll be instantly killed. The best way to test this out is by squishing yourself via a door, and believe it or not, it's actually very easy to glitch out of bounds, it's not even funny. There's also a secondary anti-cheat system within the game where if someone gets banned from Sanctic by like an admin script or something, they'll just get stuck on an infinitely looping main menu screen. Yeah, I'm not joking, it's a real thing that's in the game right now. On top of this, there are also a couple of moderators for the game, who regularly look for exploiters within servers, especially in killer mode and juggernaut mode, as they're the competitive modes. So yeah, I think it's safe to say that Sanctic has a pretty good anti-cheat system, compared to other Roblox games, I'd say. However, if you ever do find an exploiter that happened to get under the radar, I suggest going over to the Sanctic Discord and reporting them via the Exploit Reports channel. Trust me, it works pretty well, and basically all hackers end up getting banned who are reported there. Speedrun Mode Speedrun Mode is an alternative way to playing Sanctic, and as many of you probably know by now within the Sanctic Settings menu, there's an option that allows you to turn on Speedrun Mode by inputting your speedrunning API key. Although I don't have access to the feature myself, this menu allows you to toggle disabling game passes, toggle the Area 51 personnel checklist pop out, and finally the whole mode adds a trophy icon in the top right hand corner of your screen to prove that you are a speedrunner of course. All of this stuff being added into the game was in response to Sanctic being accepted for runs by speedrun.com, a website where people can submit speedruns for all sorts of games. I honestly think this is really cool, and even if the feature isn't available for absolutely everyone, it's still enjoyable to watch Sanctic speedruns every once in a while out of sheer boredom. 
Killer Mutant Glitch. This entry refers to a rare glitch that can happen within Killer Mode exclusively. Typically at the start of the round, it's caused by two people selecting the same killer at the exact same time with the use of the Killer Choice Game Pass. When this happens, both of the killers get stuck inside one another, forming a mutant if you will. As cool as this sounds, it's really not that special. In fact, it's incredibly annoying to come across. Not only are the movements of the killer completely screwed up and can't be controlled properly by either player, but even resetting will not form a respawn. The only way to fix this glitch is if both players are killed by a survivor, or you jump into the fan. Now I'm no expert on Sanctic's mechanics and how to fix glitches or anything like that, but I'm guessing this glitch occurs because, well, the game gets confused on who's controlling the killer since you're both stuck in the same body or something like that, and when you reset, it doesn't actually know that you've reset or something like that. I, I don't know, it could be like a Roblox thing for all I know. There was also a similar bug in the game at one point which, if done correctly, allowed you to spawn on the surface as a killer. But of course, unlike the Killer Mutant glitch, this one has since been patched. Hexavillius. Hexavillius is a former Sanctic developer that was responsible for a lot of the visual assets within many of the Sanctic updates over the past two years or so, such as images like the badge icons and a lot of buildings and models within the game, such as the sewer and Wendigo areas respectively. He also contributed massively to the development of the upcoming update Sector 2, which we'll talk about a bit later. However, notice how I said former Sanctic developer, as on March the 12th, 2023, Hexavillius would sadly step down from the Sanctic team, due to developer inactivity, mismanagement of the game, drama in the Sanctic Discord, and just overall burnout, stress, and personal issues. As for my thoughts on this, I fully support the guy, and I'm sure stepping down or choosing to step down from the Sanctic team was not easy for Hex, and that's why I wish him the best of luck on whatever passion he strives for next. Hex, if you're watching, I hope you're doing better now. Round 666. Round 666 is a secret easter egg within Endless Survival Mode. For the easiest way to access it, simply enter a VIP server, head to the round select option, and type 666 for the starting round. You'll then be teleported to, uh, well, heck I guess. We all know that 666 is the devil's number, of course, and while well, with this easter egg being in the game, it kind of gives, you know, evidence to Endless Survival being some kind of hell or underworld, that or Satan's canon to the Sanctic storyline, I don't know, take your pick. Also, did you know that Round 666 only exists in the game today because of my previous Sanctic Iceberg video I made? Yeah! For whatever reason, the creator of that iceberg decided to put Round 666 on it as some sort of joke. Homer saw the video and decided to add it to the main game as a real thing. Yeah. I am not joking, I am the only reason this easter egg exists in the game today. Neat origin story, don't you think? Like I said on layer 1, Homer watches my videos all the time. Well, actually that's not true, I, I don't know if he watches my videos all the time. The only videos I know that he's watched are the original Sanctic Iceberg video, and a Sanctic Discord video, or a video on Sanctic Discord that I deleted. So, maybe he doesn't watch me all the time, but hey, he's watching right now, I, I know that for a fact. SB Portula. We briefly mentioned this guy in the iceberg earlier, but for a quick reminder, SB Portula is one of Hammer Mafia 1's longtime Roblox friends, and of course he created the previously mentioned Sanctic 2 game. I have SB Portula a whole layer below Sanctic 2 though, as I believe the game is more famous than SB Portula himself, so uh, whoops. It's not really known if SB Portula has contributed to Sanctic a whole lot or has even worked on the game at all recently, however he is listed in the game's credits under character animations and for helping with the Spanish translation for the game. Although even if he didn't work on Sanctic that much, it is worth noting that he did create a lot of maps for humans vs zombies. Also random fact, a lot of people seem to be confused about the scientist guy within a lot of the old Sanctic mode thumbnails. Well believe it or not, yeah that's actually SB Portal's Roblox avatar. Need a little easter egg Homer. Sanctic Shutdown. On July the 7th, 2022, Roblox actually took action against Sanctic, completely shutting down Classic Mode and putting the Sanctic test servers under review, basically stopping anyone from playing the game at all. And if you thought that was bad enough, Homo Mafia 1's entire account was banned for exactly three days. This was due to Sanctic having blood within the game, you know, blood under the dying noob like I mentioned earlier, blood in the medical bay, blood in the... I think it's in the cinema room, Blood on Sonic.exe. Yeah, I'm not joking, Roblox actually took down Sactic. We're having some super unrealistic ketchup splattered around the map. It's as dumb as it sounds. 
Although this isn't the entire story, a couple of days before this whole ban happened, Sanctic test servers were actually put under review because of the execution room's existence of all things. Basically, Roblox moderation didn't like how there were torture devices within the room, such as an electric chair and a guillotine, which I guess is fair, that's why the execution room is so empty nowadays, by the way, but taking down the whole game for having some blood in it, it's kind of silly, don't you think? Now, I did actually speak with a couple of small Roblox developers and people who know way more about the Roblox TOS than me, and apparently Apparently the reason why Roblox took down Sanctic was probably due to the game being available on Xbox. And apparently Roblox Xbox have special guidelines on what you can put in your games, which of course includes no blood and violence whatsoever. And that's good and all, but there are so many Roblox games available on Xbox that have blood in them anyway. Like Phantom Forces for example, why isn't that game taken down? We don't know! I mean this is Roblox after all, you know. I, I once uploaded an image of my Roblox avatar and they deleted it saying it was inappropriate warned me for it. I still haven't gotten over that by the way, I'm coming for you Roblox. Although Sanctic, believe it or not, still has blood within the game. You know, like on the Tails door pop-up and on Leatherface's clothes. So I don't know why Roblox hasn't taken down the game again. I guess they're blind or something. But hey, at least now you know why a lot of the blood within Sanctic is gone nowadays. I don't really mind though, it didn't really add much to Sanctic. The Leader Curses. On the topic of Sanctic possibly breaking Roblox 2S, yeah, the leader within Area 51 storming actually uses a bad word, oh dear, shield little Timmy's eyes. You don't need to be a genius to understand what word the leader was going to utter had he finished his sentence, but I'm actually surprised Roblox moderation still haven't caught onto this. That being said, it probably doesn't break Roblox 2S, like I guess an argument could be made that the leader could have almost said shoot or something instead, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, it's just a word anyway, like who really cares? The the parents? Pfft. Subatomic Sam. Subatomic Sam is another developer that occasionally works on builds and models for Sanctuk. He's most famous for creating the Tails doll area, as his name can be famously found in-game underneath the stairs in one of the rooms within that location. Also he made aberrations, so that's cool. But yeah, Sam is a little less known than the other two Sanctuk devs or former devs I've met on the iceberg so far, but again with all of the interactions I've had with him, I'd say he's a pretty chill guy. Jason's Chainsaw Glitch. Like the name implies, this entry refers to a glitch that could happen in older versions of Sanctuk, where if you did a bunch of insane stuff, you could actually obtain Jason Voorhees' chainsaw weapon. No, I'm not kidding, like how was this bug even a thing? Now of course this glitch has long been patched, like it's been patched for so long that Jason doesn't even have a chainsaw anymore, he has a machete for crying out loud, he's not like a leather face clone. But yeah, apparently according to some longtime Sanctuk players that I've spoken to about this glitch, apparently, and I say apparently because I don't actually have any proof of this, apparently the so-called chainsaw glitch that you allowed you to pick up Jason's chainsaw allowed you to kill other players, like with the chainsaw, which I could definitely see that making sense from a technical standpoint. Hey, kill him up for kill mode was a thing, I guess. Also something else that's interesting to note, besides the fact that Jason literally can't harm players at all without his chainsaw, is the name of the weapon itself. Don't kill others. Interesting name, Homer. Sector 2. Sector 2 refers to an upcoming update that is or was planned to come to Sanctic in the future. The update would add an entirely new location to the game, new killers as well as new original weapons. It even had an entire story dedicated to it. In fact, they even made a whole video recently on all the content that's planned to come to the update so far. Although after I did make that video, Hexvillis, the lead developer of the update, stepped down as the developer. So at this point, Sector 2 might not even release at all, and it could be cancelled. However, I have heard that the remaining Sector 2 developers are still working on the game, so maybe, you know, the update could release sometime in the future, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. If you want the details though, again I made a separate video talking about the update, so after this video is finished, go check it out. Gary's Mod Area 51 map. Yeah, that's right, in Area 51 map for the Steam game, Gary's Mod actually exists. Not too much more on this entry though, since I've never actually played Gary's Mod myself, nor do I own the game, but from the screenshots and footage I found online, it's basically just a complete rip of Icy Fresh's underground base that I mentioned earlier. It even apparently has functioning elevators and doors that move up and down. So yeah, if you happen to have Gary's Mod lying around, look it up, download it, and see what you think. Link in description. The Toxic Maze. The Toxic Maze is a removed location within Sanctic Classic and Killer Mode, and as the name suggests, it was a huge maze location that was present within the sewer area. In fact, it was so large that killer NPCs refused to enter the area entirely, based on their AI. Within the maze, through enough exploring, you could eventually get the AWP and M4A1 weapons. So yeah, if you knew your way around the location, you could get two pretty easy guns without the fear of being killed by any killer. Now the main reason why the Toxic Maze was removed is pretty obvious. It was just too 
too complicated for Sanctic. I mean, it's one thing having a confusing area to explore, but an entire maze with like a million dead ends? I, I just... Not not fun at all, and in fact the area was so poorly designed, it didn't even make its way into Endless Survival or Juggernaut mode. Thankfully though, some of the assets did go on to be used in the new and arguably much better sewer update and expansion to the game, so it's not a total L I suppose. I know that some people did like the Toxic Maze, but I don't know, it just... It just didn't really work. I'm not one of those people, and I'm glad we have something much better in the game now. Escape from Area 51. Escape from Area 51, much like Beneath the Surface, is another old Area 51 game that was made and developed by Homer Mafia 1. Yes, another one. Although unlike Beneath the Surface, Escape from Area 51 is basically just your average boring bland Area 51 game. Although this one seems to have a big focus on Slenderman for whatever reason. Yeah, basically every killer is some variant of Slender. It's pretty weird. Again, like Beneath the Surface, it's probably worth checking out Escape Area 51 if you have around 15 minutes to kill. It's a pretty short game and has a couple of new rooms and of course you can actually escape Area 51, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, that's about it really. Nothing too mind-blowing. Aberration was originally a killer. This one is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll briefly talk about it nonetheless. But yes, before Aberration was turned into a boss, she was actually a normal killer within classic mode. Unfortunately though, she never made it past the test servers before the developers, and specifically Homer, decided to scrap her entirely. This was probably because she was just way too unique compared to the rest of the game, and the area which was created specifically for her caused a lot of lag between servers. Yeah, you heard that right, Aberration even had her own mini location centered around her which even inspired the previously mentioned Sector 2 idea I mentioned just a bit ago. And although Aberration eventually made her way back into Boss Rush, of course, as we all know, the area that she once spawned in didn't, and it's still on the list of removed Sanctic features. But in short, yes, Aberration did used to be a killer. 81975. Before the code for the alien room was changed to be a random 5 digit number that was different for every classic, killer, and storming mode server, it actually always used to be a fixed number that never changed. And of course that number was 81975. And fun fact, instead of spawning in many different locations all across the map randomly, it always spawned within the Slenderman room, which funny enough is still a valid code location to this day. This was likely changed due to Homer wanting the code to be server specific instead of having Having players to just look up the code online and get a free badge, it makes sense if you think about it. But hey, I guess it's still possible that when you join a classic mode server, the code could still be randomized perfectly to 81975, albeit a very, very small chance of that happening. 1 million kills event. On the 31st of December 2022, Hubba One himself hosted a live event within a Sanctic VIP server to congratulate the player Sieb for being the first legitimate person ever to reach 1 million killers killed within the game. The event itself had a whole fireworks scene, and both Hubba Mafia One and Sieb gave their own word on the massive achievement. After this event, all of the players within the server were teleported to a copy of the Sanctic map from 2015 as a final celebration. No, I am not joking, this event was sick. Now this event, even if I didn't show up, was actually really cool to watch, and you know, I really hope Homer does something like this in the future, you know, like a Sactic live event. You know, it doesn't have to be in every single mode, it could just be in classic mode, but you know, like having like a live event that debuted a new mode or something like that, I'd really like to see it. And although this event was pretty cool and all, even if I wasn't able to attend, see if the player who did reach 1 million kills, well, let's just say things only started going downhill from there, but that's an entry we'll cover on the next layer of the iceberg. Vicious Wraith. The Vicious Wraith was an NPC that was introduced within the Sanctic Halloween event update of 2022. After talking to the entity, you could choose to accept his quest in collecting the pieces of candy around the map for both a badge and the access to play the strolling around track on the main menu screen. All of this is probably non-canon to the Sanctic storyline, but the Vicious Wraith was in the game at one point. Hey, maybe next year they'll let us play as him as a killer in killer mode and juggernaut mode. Who knows? Would be pretty cool. Gun Duplication Glitch Similarly to the previously mentioned Jason Chainsaw bug, the Gun Duplication Glitch is similar in that it doesn't work anymore in modern day Sanctum. What it involved was giving a chosen gun to Ghostface, buying or equipping another gun, killing Ghostface who had your previous weapon, and BAM, he had two guns just like that, but you could definitely stack more than two with this method. This glitch was most commonly used in Endless Survival to duplicate ray guns to reach crazy high rounds without running out of ammo. Of course this doesn't matter as much anymore as as soon as this glitch was eventually patched, Homer added round saving, making it actually possible to reach round 300 in Endless again without cheating, so it's not the end of the world. 
Roblox FPS Unlocker. Roblox FPS Unlocker is a plugin for Roblox that, like the name suggests, unlocks your frames per second whenever you play any Roblox game or you're using Roblox Studio. As if you don't know, Roblox caps your frames at 60 for whatever reason, that there isn't a reason. Now this plugin is actually really cool, but what does it have to do with Sactic? Well, Roblox FPS Unlocker, it makes Sactic run a little strangely to say the least. Most notably, a lot of killer animations get much faster, guns become more fluid, and the loading screens go crazy. I mean, look at this. In fact, it's so much of a difference and an advantage for those using the plugin that Roblox FPS Unlocker has actually been banned by Sanctic speedrunning altogether. And I can't say I blame the mod team. Mikhail Myers. This refers to a pretty hilarious mistake that was present on the Killer Choice screen back when Killer Mode was first released, in which it listed Michael Myers being spelled as Mikhail Myers. It's pretty funny that this oversight made its way into the final game, but it makes sense I suppose as of course English is not Homer's first language. There have been some other spelling mistakes within Sanctic in the past and some grammar errors too, however this I'd argue is probably the biggest and best one we'll ever get. Gamer Boy. Gamer Boy is a former developer of Sanctuk and worked on a, a a couple of animations for the game. Yep, I'm gonna be honest. I have absolutely no idea what Gamer Boy has done for the main game. What did he create, like some killer models or something like that? I know he made like the run animation in like classic mode, but yeah, I I, I couldn't tell you. Now you see, back in 2020, Gamer Boy left the Sanctic community and unfriended Homer in the process. This was due to Gamer Boy repeatedly breaking rules within Sanctic Discord and him thinking he was a developer who could get away with doing so until Homer banned him. Common Homer Mafia 1W, I think. But yeah, Gamer Boy hasn't been seen in the Sanctic community since, and probably won't return ever again. Surprisingly though, he does still play Roblox to this day, it seems. The Fazbear Gamer. The Fazbear Gamer is or was the first ever documented YouTuber that covered Sanctic and Roblox Area 51 content consistently. Basically the first ever Sanctic content creator. He began his channel all the way back in 2015 by uploading meme videos, however quickly switched to making Roblox content, and you guessed it, videos on Sanctic and Area 51 games. In fact, his most popular Sanctic video today sits at almost 800,000 views, which may not seem like a lot nowadays, but back then for 20 17? Well, that was pretty good. Especially considering that back then, Sanctic and Air 51 games didn't have much content to them at all. In fact, the Fazbear Gamer even played Air 51 games like Escape Air 51, Beneath the Surface, and Sanctic 2. However, unfortunately, as some of you may know by now, the Fazbear Gamer hasn't uploaded since late 2017, and his channel has since become incredibly inactive. And I really can't say I blame the guy, you know, back then in 2017, Roblox was still basically considered a kid's game. You know, maybe the guy just grew up one day and stopped you know, stop wanting to do YouTube. Maybe he went to a new school. We have no idea. And, you know, like I said, there really wasn't much to Roblox and Sanctic back then. You know, everyone says that old Roblox is better, but... Oh, Roblox suck, let's be honest. Although, even if he's grown out of YouTube today, he doesn't seem to have moved on from Roblox quite yet. In fact, at the time of making this video, his account, Shoma2004, was seen online quite recently, actually. And he even still seems to heart and respond to occasional comments on his channel. Although, he has also deleted a few videos, I've noticed. Will the Fazbear Gamer ever come back to content creation today? Well, probably not. But I don't think he has to. The Fazbear Gamer has cemented his legacy within Sanctic forever, I think. And if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be here today either. Old Badge Icons Now, badges within Sanctic have been a part of the game since basically release date, but what you may not know about them is that they didn't always look this clean. In fact, here are a few examples of what some of the newer badges to older badges look like side by side. And uh, yeah, the difference in quality is pretty obvious. The reason for this, of course, is because Homer created the old badges, and Hexphilius created the new ones, an actual artist. Now, obviously, I prefer the newer badge icons. I mean, it would be something if we still had badges being drawn in Microsoft paint, you know, and not discrediting Homer's art skills or anything, you know, they're very good, but, you know, the newer ones are better. But yeah, this is what all of the old badges look like, there's a wiki page in the description that gives you a list of all of them, but in short, if you remember any of these, consider yourself a long time Sactic player. Killer vs. Killer Mode. Killer vs. Killer Mode is a custom Sanctic game mode made by Homer Mafia 1 himself for special live events which are held on the Sanctic Discord. It's not actually in the base game, but rather is only activated within a specific server when Homer enables some type of developer script. 
as you can expect from the name, Killer vs. Killer Mode focuses on the killers against the killers. And yeah, it's pretty cursed with all of them spawning on the surface like this. But quite fun to watch, I must say. Now, will Killer vs. Killer Mode ever officially be added into the game? Probably not. I mean, Slender would just dominate since he insta-kills. But there are videos on YouTube if you want to see this quote-unquote removed mode in action. Rustlin Sal. Rustlin Sal is one of, if not the most famous Sanctic speedrunner of all time, and has held countless world records on the game in the past. Whether that be in boss rush mode with his insane times, or his endless playthroughs where he's made it further than any exploit could boast about, most people consider Rustlin Sal to be the best Sanctic player of all time. And honestly, I would actually agree with that fact, or at least he's in the top 5. I mean, how many world records does he currently hold? Three? Five? It's so many, and his dedication to grind hundreds and hundreds of hours each week just to keep them is insane. But yeah, just wanted to add this section in just because Russell and Sal's done so much for the community and I feel like he deserves more recognition for it. Don't worry, he did not hold me at gunpoint and ask me to add this section in or anything, you know. I think they bought it. I think we've just fooled everyone. Although I know he's watching the video right now, I still don't know how to say his name right. Ruslan Sal? Ruslan Sal? Hmm. Probably should have added that fact to the iceberg. Killer Themes. As most of you probably know by now, two out of the 25 killers currently in Sanctic play music when you are close to them. These being both Smile Dog and Slender Man. However, what you may not know is where these music tracks originate from. Smile Dog's theme comes from a short and down version of the song Fear by a music artist with a surname I am not going to attempt pronouncing. And as for Slender's theme, it's basically just a short and down version of the song Dark Tension Eerie by the publisher Planet Unknown. The main reason why these killers have themes within the game is most likely because they were taken from a free model made by somebody else on the marketplace, and of course Homer or the developers never really saw a reason to remove them. But yeah, I think killers having their own music track just makes them more memorable and interesting overall. I hope we get more of them in the future. Bosses don't count by the way. Rake Hellhounds. Every three to five rounds within Endless Survival Mode, a Hellhound round has a chance to spawn instead of, you know, regular killers. These Hellhound rounds are notably far easier than regular killer rounds, are a lot faster, and they give you a max ammo power up at the end. So yes, they are indeed very helpful. But of course, the Hellhounds that appear on these rounds aren't actually Hellhounds. No, they're just Smile Dogs. But did you know that at one point, Hellhounds actually had their own custom model? Well, I wouldn't really say custom. They're basically just a reskin, darker version of the Rake, which is why I gave them the name of Rake Hellhounds. And I'm gonna be honest, I prefer these over the current Hellhounds we have today. Sure, Smile Dog is indeed a dog, so it makes sense for why he would act like a Hellhound, but there's literally nothing that sets both the Hellhound and the Killer apart. Well, I guess the difference would be the fire, but even that is such a minor change. And in fact, at least at the time of making this video, normal Smile Dog doesn't even appear as a regular killer killer with an endless. Like, what's up with that? I don't know, I feel like Smile Dog should appear as a normal killer while also appearing as a Hellhound. It just makes so much sense. But what type of Hellhound do you think is better? Let me know in the comments. The old Hellhounds or the Smile Dog Hellhounds? I wouldn't be surprised if this got changed in the future. Boss Rush is connected. As most of you probably know by now, the locations within Boss Rush mode in Sanctic are believed to be set in completely different places from Area 51. I mean, it's not difficult to see why you fight each boss in an area that doesn't exist in any other mode. Or do you? Well, Eagle Eye players soon noticed that shortly after Kraken made his debut into the game, a mysterious locked door appeared near the AWP location and the newly expanded sewer area within Classic, Killer, Juggernaut, and Endless Survival modes. This mysterious locked door could not be opened by any means, and what do you know, it lined up perfectly in appearance to the Kraken door that also appeared within Boss Rush mode. Now, obviously, looking or glitching behind this door within each of the modes by using Shift Lock wouldn't reveal anything. No, in fact, it was just a deep pit to the empty void. But even if the areas aren't physically connected in-game, that doesn't stop the idea of them being connected, at least in terms of the lore. Even if nothing has been confirmed by Homer or any of the developers, I think that the theory of this door being the entrance to the Kraken boss fight room is very much intended. I mean, even the size of the room seems to line up perfectly with the room proportions of the out-of-bounds area behind the door in classic mode. There's no way this is a coincidence. Although even if Kraken is connected to the other modes in some way, so far there hasn't been any rooms that I've come across within Area 51 that may lead into the Aberrations area, as the door that appears before that boss fight isn't present within any of the other modes.
episodes, but it's certainly possible that some type of connection for her will get added into the future. Sonic.exe Death Glitch Now we've talked about a few glitches on this iceberg already, the Killer Mutant glitch, the Jason's Chainsaw glitch, and there are still more to talk about later, but this one I feel is a little less known than the others, and while it doesn't really have an official name, I mean none of the glitches in Sanctic have a name really, I like to dub this one the Sonic.exe Death Glitch, and it was present in the game for a short time during early 2019. This glitch would involve the killer Sonic.exe's body parts, for whatever reason not disappearing properly in both Classic and Killer Mode, and they would just lay that on the ground forever until the server got reset. For some context, whenever a killer dies nowadays within Sanctic, their body parts disappear shortly thereafter, which is done to remove lag of course. Now as far as I know, I'm actually the only person in Sanctic ever who's actually caught this glitch on camera, you know, uploaded it to YouTube, and that's probably because it was only in the game for a couple of mere days before it was eventually patched by Homer. Makes you wonder how many other Sanctic glitches were out in the game at one point, but no one bothered to, you know, record them. Although the memories I have of this glitch are vague, I can remember this bug being an absolute headache in killer mode servers, as the bodies caused a ton of lag when you got near a large number of them. But yeah, just another cool glitch in Sanctic's history I suppose, nothing super special. Beneath the Surface 2 So earlier on the iceberg I mentioned Beneath the Surface, an old Roblox Area 51 story game that was developed and worked on by Homer Mafia 1, but did you know there was actually a planned sequel to the game that was in development after the success of the original, and well, long story short, the game was never finished. Basically what I think happened is that Homer left the Area 51 group sometime while the game was still being worked on, and the project simply could not be finished, as the game's description itself states that they are quote unquote looking for developers to finish it. And yeah, the place itself hasn't been updated since 2019, so I doubt the game will be finished anytime soon, if ever. However, if you do want to go play it, you can buy quote unquote early access to the game, although I would strongly discourage it as Beneath the Surface 2 is very much broken, and you'll just be stuck in a looping hell of falling into the void forever. So uh, yeah, don't bother wasting your Robux, I guess. Game Teleporters One of Sanctic's lesser known remove mechanics. Game Teleporters were a feature within older versions of the game, which, like the name implies, teleported due to other games created and developed by Homer, such as Beneath the Surface, Escape Area 51, Humans vs Zombies, among others. You can even find the decals that were used for these game teleporters still in Homer Mafia 1's inventory today, which is pretty cool. The screenshots and pictures I do have aren't the best quality unfortunately, as there aren't many videos I can find left on YouTube that show these quote unquote game teleporters still in action as they were removed sometime during early 2017, but yeah, although they did offer the option to instantly teleport to home as other games because, you know, looking up the places on Roblox search is overrated, I think you can see why they were removed, and I doubt we'll ever see them again. Survive Among Us in Area 51 No, this isn't a joke entry or anything, this is actually talking about another Area 51 fan game not made by Mafia 1, known as Survive Among Us in Area 51, a lesser known fan game I'd assume as it being on the fourth layer and all. But why is this game so low on the iceberg? Well, let's just say that the thing that sets this game apart from other Area 51 games is the fact that this one completely stole Sactic's map. No. I'm not joking. And I'm not talking about the underground base map. No, I mean they completely ripped the official Sanctic map by Homer Mafia 1. Well, an older version of it anyway. Even as the old sewers. Don't believe me? Well, how about the fact that all of the fan art is present in the exact same spot as the main game? In fact, it shouldn't be present here at all. And both the prison area and the teleporter room are here, which were both made by Homer Mafia 1 himself. Yeah, they just ripped the whole map by using a game-stealing exploit or something. It's pretty scummy if you ask me. Although, thankfully, Survivor Mafia us in Area 51 is very dead nowadays with an awful like to dislike ratio, this wasn't always the case, and at one point it was infamous for having completely botted servers which eventually got its player count to surpass Sanctic's player count. Yeah, not joking, that's pretty bad. Similar incidents to this have happened in the past as well, such as Mr. Nazo Heroes Area 51, in which the developer stole many Sanctic rooms and locations to add to his own custom Area 51 map, without the proper credit. But yeah, you can still play Survive Among Us in Area 51 if you really, really want to, it's still up on Roblox, but yeah, would not recommend it, it's pretty awful, let's just move on. Declining the Vicious Wraith 
Like we mentioned on the iceberg earlier, the Vicious Wraith was an NPC that was introduced within the Halloween update of 2022, along with a quest in Bant Reward that was removed once the event ended. Of course, to attain the said quest, you just needed to accept his challenge, but what if you declined the Vicious Wraith instead? What would happen? Well, curious players got more than they bargained for, as upon declining the Vicious Wraith's quest, they would be teleported to the previously mentioned Round 666 Easter Egg, except in this instance, were given no points to buy guns or doors with the water. Whatsoever. So yeah, you could imagine it was basically just an instant death as soon as you declined. I think this mini easter egg within the Sanctic Halloween update was a pretty inventive way to troll players who went around looking for secrets. Of course, you could just go straight back to the game and accept his quest, but I don't know, I hope Hermit does something like this again in the future. It was a pretty funny thing to watch. Zombie Bomb. The Zombie Bomb is an old, and I mean very old, experimental item that was added and then shortly removed from Sanctic sometime in late 2015 or early 2016. In fact, it was believed to only be in the game for a couple of days before it was never seen again. It's funny because the Sanctic community only really found out about the Zombie Bomb through the loading screen trivia text, which was added by Homer himself a whole six years after the item was removed from the game. When the Sanctic community eventually asked Homer himself about the removal of the item, he then confirmed that this is what the zombie bomb originally looked like in-game, and that it could be found in a secret area somewhere, probably by my guess somewhere in the radioactive area, as that's where zombies spawn in the main game and you know, zombies, zombie bomb, it makes sense. Homer has also stated that he recalls a video uploaded to YouTube once that shows a person getting and finding the zombie bomb. However, I, among many others, have looked and we can't find anything, so it's a safe bet to assume the video in question has long since been deleted. However, as most of you probably know by now, the zombie bomb was actually re-added into the game very recently. Well, kind of. It's in fact not a weapon that you can find around the map, but one of Captain Zombie's abilities, where he's able to throw a zombie bomb which causes zombies' hands to rise from the ground which are able to trap players. It's actually a really cool ability. According to Humber Mafia 1 himself, this is actually how the zombie bomb originally functioned within the game, you know, when it was still an item. Apart from the hands actually grabbing onto the players and like, keeping them in one spot, that wasn't a thing for some reason, and you know, the zombie bomb kill killers, not players. But yeah, the zombie bomb is back in the game today, in some capacity at least, after almost a decade of being absent from Sactuk. And now you know the story of it too, from a remove weapon to a killer ability. Quite the life cycle, I must say. Smiley face in Aberration Room. During the Aberration boss fight, if Aberration manages to grab you via one of her many different attacks, she'll briefly take you to a small, blurry, mysterious room with a purple haze to it. This small room has three corridors to it and three Corrupted One killers. The goal is, of course, to avoid the Corrupted Ones for a certain amount of time until Aberration brings you back to the main boss fight room, and you can continue from there. Now, I think the purpose of this room is pretty obvious. It's supposed to be a little fun minigame side challenge thing, you know, to distract yourself from the main Aberration boss fight. But if you actually take the time to look around this location, you might find something a little strange. Above each of these hallways and these corridors, if you squint hard enough, you can make out a very small red smiley face. Although it's much easier to see this while spectating, I don't think there's much more to this entry other than it being a neat little easter egg. The Sieve Incident. Alright, so this entry is going to get pretty messy with the information I currently have, but I'll try my best to explain everything as best I can since people kept asking for me to put this entry on the iceberg. Now, earlier in the video, of course, we mentioned Sieve, the first ever Sanctic player to reach 1 million kills within Classic Mode, and he even had an entire custom in-game event themed around this achievement, which Homo Mafia 1 set up for him. However, unfortunately, all of this positivity that Sieve brought to the Sanctic game would be short-lived, as let's just say after the event was over, Seep started taking a disliking to a lot of the members within the Sanctic community, for seemingly no reason. This whole drama began on the evening of March the 3rd, 2023, when Seep reported to the Sanctic staff that the Sanctic developers, both Hexavilius and Mike, were planning to quote-unquote nuke the server. This was due to disagreements about certain staff missions with the server owner Warbird, and they wanted to get revenge. Thanks to Seep, this nuke was prevented. Hex and Mike were originally banned from the Sanctic server, however were quickly unbanned, and along with Warbird, all three of them came to an agreement about the previously mentioned staff permissions issue. And that's where the story could have ended. Sieb had stopped the destruction of the entire Sanctic Discord, and the rest of the server members and admins praised him for doing the right thing. And he definitely did do the right thing. However, the very next day, Sieb was demoted from his admin status for an undisclosed reason, as he proved to Subatomic Sam and the rest of the moderator team that he was unfit to be a member of staff. This angered Sieb immensely and caused him a great deal of distress, which eventually led him to taking the same path that both Hexavilius and Mike previously attempted by trying to nuke the server. Sieb not being the sharpest tool in the shed though, in 
informed other members of the community, who will remain nameless, of his plans. However, while Sieb believed that they were his allies, these members immediately reported Sieb's plan to the rest of the Sanctic Discord mod team, which then got him banned. And that's all of the confirmed facts we have on the Seep incident so far. But that's not where our story ends. But everything I'm about to talk about is still in speculation, nothing is truly confirmed, so take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt. But I thought it was worth bringing up because, well, it may or may not be true. Shortly after Seed was banned from the server though, Mike along with several other Sanctic Discord staff members were getting notifications from their inbox stating that both their Roblox and Google account passwords were suddenly being changed, indicating a possible breach by an unknown attacker. Of course the blame was put on Seed, I mean all of this only happened after Seed was banned and his nuke on the server was unsuccessful, but again like I just said, this is all speculation. A theory that I've seen being tossed around is that the breaches were a result of something else entirely, it's certainly possible, and Seed himself was responded to the allegations saying that he was apparently framed by somebody else, but until we get a definitive statement from him or whoever did this, nothing is truly confirmed. There are many people within the Sanctic community who now have a negative opinion on Seep. Even before the drama, he was disliked by a lot of the community for just being annoying. If you want my opinion on it, well, I think it's best to remain neutral in a situation like this. And while I did unfriend Seep myself and missed all this chaos, I want to let him know that I have nothing personal against him, and it was merely a precaution on my end. You know, I don't want to get hacked. I do the same if it was for any of my friends really. But for all of you watching right now, please do not go and attack Seeb or any of the Sanctic Discord moderator team. You can make up your own mind on the situation of course, I just added this section into the iceberg to inform people about the drama, not to drag down Seeb's reputation. If I have any updates, I'll leave them in the pinned comment. Tips Game Pass. This entry refers to a remove Game Pass that was purchasable for 10 tickets and older versions of Sanctic, simply known as Tips with the brackets, support my work. Although unlike other Game Passes within Sanctic at the time, this one didn't offer any content or value in-game, and was only there if people wanted to support Hammer Mafia 1's work on the game. Although this isn't entirely true, as the Game Pass was eventually changed and rebranded into the Endless Survival Starter Game Pass, we now know in the game today. So even players who did buy Tips to support Hammer Mafia 1's work out of sheer kindness, were eventually rewarded. Area 51 Companies. This refers to the fictional made up companies which are canon within the Sanctic law. What do I mean by this? Well, if you look around the surface area of the game in classical killer mode and speak to some of the soldiers walking around the base, you'll find that the trucks that they build in the workshop are actually manufactured by specific companies. These companies are known as Rauk, Peak, Omega, and Apex respectively, and you could even find what appears to be their logos on each of the trucks representing each company, which I have some high quality versions of here. I don't think there's any deeper meaning to Area 51's companies besides these facts. I mean, you know, the developers probably just gave them a cool name, gave them a cool logo. I mean, the, the technology's gotta come from somewhere, right? So, you know, they just made them up on the spot, I guess. They're just background elements. Sonic.exe Jump Scare, yet another one of Sanctic's many remove features, and as the name of this entry suggests, Sonic.exe actually used to have a jump scare or a pop-up, similarly to Slenderman's pop-up we have in the game today, and this is what it actually would have looked like. You might have seen this jump scare in other Roblox horror games before as well. I'm guessing the reason for its removal was probably because having a ton of jump scares within Sanctic might have been a bit distracting. I mean, the only pop-up we have left in the game today is Slenderman, because, well, it's Slenderman, and also Sonic's jump scare might have been removed because the killer itself was later changed to no longer be able to instantly kill the player, so it makes sense for both reasons. Killers were cloned. Like I mentioned on the iceberg earlier with the zombie enemy spawning in groups of three, every other killer within classic and endless survival mode only spawns one of each, because well, there can only be one of each killer in existence, right? Well, this wasn't actually always the case, and in older versions of the game, multiple versions of each of the killers in Sanctic would spawn in different parts of the map. What I mean by this is, let's say, for example, Ghostface, there'll be a Ghostface that spawns in the Double Doors area, there'll be a Ghostface that spawns in the Slender Cage, there'll be a Ghostface that spawns in the Sonic Room, and there'll be a Ghostface that spawns in the Cargo area. You get it, it makes sense. Of course, this feature didn't stick around for long, and it was removed in early 2016, and it's pretty obvious why. I mean, back then there were only like four different killers in the game, running around a huge map, so I guess Homer just decided to fill in the empty slots with clones of already existing killers until he could think of new ones to replace them. Them. Yeah, imagine if this feature still existed in the game today, with like 5 Wendigos running around the base, would not be fun at all. Hemet Adam. A lot of people don't know this, but Hammer Mafia 1 actually has a YouTube channel, simply known as Hammer Mafia 1. It's linked on his Roblox profile, and the time of recording only has one video available to watch. But what you may not know is that Hammer Mafia 1 actually had a much older YouTube channel before his current one, known as Hemet Adam. 
Hopefully I didn't butcher that name again. The reason why we know how Mafia One owns his account is due to a very old comment on Brett's 50 Rounds video, in which he could be seen outright confirming that he is Homer, and also to add further evidence to the account being legitimate, there's also a space between both the sentence and the exclamation mark, which if you don't know is a trend commonly seen throughout Homer's punctuation all the time. It's even become a meme at this point. Now I know this one comment isn't damning evidence or anything, I get it, it's not, anyone could pretend to be anyone on the internet, but I don't know, I remember actually seeing videos on Homer Mafia 1's old YouTube channel, you know, like a Beneath the Surface walkthrough, I think a video on Beneath the Surface 2 as well, uh, a couple videos on other Roblox horror games, and I think, if I remember correctly, a video on Escape from Era 51. Although I don't actually have any screenshots of these videos, or no archives have been saved to my knowledge, I'm just going off of memory here, you'll just have to believe me, okay? But yeah, that's the story of Homo Mafia 1's old YouTube channel. It's still up today. I wonder if he still has access to it. Aberration in Juggernaut mode. Again, as I mentioned on the iceberg earlier, Aberration used to be a normal killer within classic mode, at least within test servers for a short time. But what about killer mode in Juggernaut mode? Was she actually playable? Well, yeah, you could actually play as Aberration within killer mode. Of course, she was just a heavily nerfed version of Aberration we have in Boss Rush today, only having the ability to drag people into the previously mentioned corrupted one hallway. But what about in Juggernaut mode? Well, here's where things get a bit complicated, as at around the same time Aberration and her area were going to be added into the main game as their own update, I guess, Juggernaut mode was also going to be added into the main game at the same time, so you can imagine there was a bit of conflict between the two. So in order to test both, Homer held an event on the Sanctic test servers and opened Juggernaut up to the public. Now keep in mind that Juggernaut mode back then had a reputation of being extremely laggy, and it was even removed from the game for months entirely at one point because it was so unplayable. And you can imagine that Aberration being added to the mode didn't do it any favours, as whenever someone played as Aberration or picked her as a Juggernaut through killer choice, more often than not they get kicked from the game instantly due to the immense lag. Now I couldn't actually find any videos of anyone using Aberration in Juggernaut mode, but I do have a couple of screenshots that I've been able to recover from that testing session, and I just generally think Aberration not functioning properly within Juggernaut mode was another reason why she was repurposed as the boss we now know today. Under construction sign. The under construction sign refers to another of Sanctic's, you guessed it, removed features. Although this one is a little less obscure. Basically, the under construction sign was a temporary sign placed above the computer room area that we have today, which basically let players know that the area was being built, I guess. The door that was supposed to lead into the computer room area and that was below the construction sign could not be opened by any players at all. And it makes sense for why this sign was here. I mean, this was before Sanctic Test Servers existed, so I guess Homer just added things to the main game whenever he chose. I mean, the only mode that was in Sanctic back then was Classic Mode, and it wasn't even called Classic Mode, it was just Sanctic. So, you know, it makes sense for why this sign existed in the first place. Although, as an added bonus through a quick Roblox Marketplace search, I was actually able to find the original source under construction sign image. And believe it or not, it's actually a decal that was uploaded all the way back in 2009, way before Sanctic even existed. So that's pretty cool. The first Sanctic video is lost. This entry is exactly as it says. Simply put, the first Sanctic video that was ever published to YouTube is currently missing. However, the first Sanctic video that's still up is a Sanctic video known as Rage, Roblox Area 51, published all the way back on November 29th, 2015. We know that an older video of Sanctic had to have existed at one point, due to information from Homer himself noting on several occasions that the lost video was created sometime around the 18th of November, but he's checked and can't find it anymore. Probably because it's deleted. It's possible that Homer could have been referring to the long lost zombie bomb video that I mentioned earlier, although I doubt it. Rather, it's a separate piece of Sanctic Lost Media. But yeah, the first Sanctic video is currently missing, at least for right now, and no archives have been found, and I doubt we'll ever see it for our own eyes. Admiru. Admiru, much like the previously mentioned Rustland Sao, is another speedrunner that has held world records on multiple different Roblox games in the past. Quite a lot, actually. One of them being Sandic, and at the time of making this video, he's second overall on the Kill House world records. Behind Rustland Sao, in fact. However, this speedrun in particular would be taken into question, as while Rustland was watching the run, he noted something off with Admiru's frame rate, and watched it seemingly go up to 61 frames per second. Which, if you remember from my previous layer on the iceberg, Roblox capture frames at 60, and using any Roblox FPS unlockers is against the rules, implying that Admiro had cheated on his kill house run. However, I believe that this is in fact not true, and in Admiro's defense, I've actually had this glitch happen to myself a few times when I record videos without the FPS unlocker, and it's where visually
usually the frames per second show up as 61 as opposed to 60. The frames still are at 60, it's just a bug of some sort. I don't know how it works. Thankfully, the speedrun.com moderators never actually took down Admiru's time since it was indeed proven to be legit. But yeah, just a short little Sectic speedrunning story I wanted to share with all of you. Sanctic Discord Deletion. Now, anyone who's been in the Sanctic Discord for a while will know the rocky history that the community has had. But for those unaware, the server has switched ownership many, many times, and I'm not going to point fingers or anything, but there has also been a lot of arguments within the community between certain groups. As an example, we briefly mentioned the conflict earlier between the developers and the moderators that sparked the whole Seab incident. However, there was one admin who got so unbelievably fed up with the drama, conflict, and quote-unquote corruption within the server's moderation team that he decided to take action into his own hands, and that person would be none other than Mr. Holy. Now before I go into the details of what went down, I must ask, please do not go and attack Mr. Holy. I mean, all of this drama happened over two years ago at this point, I think in 2021, so it's pointless to try and continue this conflict. Mr. Holy only really saw one way out of the situation, to stop all of the constant arguments within the server, and that was by absolutely nuking it. Holy started by deleting every channel on the server, wiping all messages before 2021 from existence, he then proceeded to ban almost every single member in the server that was below him in moderation ranking, which at the time was about 400 plus members. So uh, yeah. Of course, Mr. Holy was promptly banned from Sanctic Discord after this incident, and eventually all of the channels were restored, and I think most of the server members were unbanned as well, but my goal was 2021 a fun time to be a part of the Sanctic community, let me tell you. Although Mr. Holy sadly did delete a lot of Sanctic history when he nuked the server, I don't necessarily hate him for it. I mean, it probably wasn't the right thing to do, but after speaking to him myself for this iceberg video, I can definitely see where he's coming from and what made him take this course of action. And no hate to the Sanctic staff team either, I mean, they were the ones who had to rebuild the entire server from the ground up, and I assume that wasn't an easy task. But yeah, again, all of this happened way back in 2021, so this incident has long been forgotten, and for good reason, I'd assume. Subject to A. If you remember earlier on the iceberg, way back on layer 2, I briefly mentioned how written down on paper 12 within the Wendigo area computer room, the boss aberration is referred to as quote unquote, subject B. We know this due to the mention of hate also within the paper, and so far aberration is the only confirmed entity within Sanctic, besides the corrupted ones, who have been confirmed to be infected with the said substance, meaning subject B has to be her. But what about subject A? I mean, if there's a subject B, there's gotta be a subject a, right? I mean, it just makes so much sense. Well, you might assume that Subject A has never been mentioned in Sanctic ever, but that's where you're actually wrong. You see, back when Aberration had her own mini location, again like we mentioned earlier, there was a paper that was present around that area that had its contents completely changed when it was eventually added back to the game. This paper being known simply as Paper 7. Nowadays, Paper 7 is found in the sewer meeting room, and it just basically talks about how a meeting was held on the 18th of May 1957 about Kalina 2. Yeah, it's pretty boring, it doesn't give us that much lore information at all. However, before the sewer expansion update and the paper was rewritten and repurposed, Paper 7 could be found behind the elevator in the old Aberrations containment area and read as follows. For Subject A Blood, has it suit Mark 2, use Standard Biological Waste Kit, Human Blood, Standard Biological Waste Kit. For Subject A Secretion, observe Class 2 Extraterrestrial Cleanup Procedures. For Subject B Fluid, immediately report citing to the nearest administrator. Do not make contact. So yes, this proves that Subject A did exist within the game at one point. I mean, they might still exist within the game, I mean, I'm not really sure, I mean, it's difficult to have Subject B without Subject A, right? What, did you just skip A entirely? I mean, it might be like Sector 2, where, yes, it is confirmed that Sector 2 does exist within the Sanctic Law, but they're not actually in the game, so... I don't know. But who could Subject A possibly be? Have we even seen them before? Well, due to this entry being on the last layer of the iceberg, I think you can assume that not many people have talked about this within the Sanctic community before. However, I think that the most likely killer to fit the criteria of Subject A would probably be Alien. I mean, firstly, Subject A... 
alien feels a bit too similar for this to be a mere coincidence. And of course, we know from the case files that I mentioned earlier that Alien is the first ever killer of Air 51, at least in terms of the law. We also know that Subject A must have been classified before Aberration within the story, because you know, Subject A has gotta come before Subject B, it makes sense. Also, the choice of words used within the paper, secretion and extraterrestrial, don't they remind you of anyone? Of course, we know that Alien is an extraterrestrial, he was captured from a faraway planet as mentioned within other papers found around Air 51, that is a locked in proven fact. And also the word secretion fits because, well, alien spits acid. Secretion is basically just a fancy word for spitting. Once again, it lines up perfectly. The only thing that goes against this theory though, in my opinion, is the comment on Subject A's supposed blood within Paper 7, as alien simply doesn't have blood that he spews out when he dies, unless the acid is his blood or something. I mean, human blood doesn't exist in Sactic, so who knows? Well, I mean, adding blood to the alien would probably get the game taken down again if we've learned anything from the past few layers on this iceberg. But I don't know, what do you guys think? Is Subject A's secret identity indeed alien, another killer we have in the game, or is it an entity we've never seen before? I'd love to get some feedback on this underrated mystery. The RPG was in the game. No, this isn't a hoax or a joke entry or anything like that. The RPG or rocket launcher was actually in Sanctic at one point, albeit all the way back in one of the first versions of the game. We know this because of two screenshots Homer provided to us a while back within the Sanctic Discord, in where a rocket launcher weapon can be seen very clearly in the radioactive area in place of where the ray gun spawns today. This was then replaced a few days later by a different RPG model, most likely because the old rocket launcher wasn't working correctly for whatever reason, and then later of course, this newer RPG was replaced with the MP5K weapon, and it hasn't been seen in the game since. But yeah, that's about it really, we don't really have too much more information on the RPG because, well, it was added and removed so quickly during a time when, you know, not many people were playing Sanctuk. And again, we only really found out about this recently from Homer Mafia 1 himself. Hey, maybe like the zombie ball, Homer will add the RPG back into the game one day. Although I doubt it, since, you know, we already have many explodey weapons already in the game to replace the RPG, but but who knows, it's certainly a possibility. Under the killer textures. This refers to a strange quirk that some of the killers have, or used to have within Sanctum, where due to the game not loading specific textures properly for whatever reason, specific killers can appear much differently. Leatherface appears with a weird looking zombie face, Eyeless Jack appears with a different mask, most likely modeled after another creepypasta fittingly named Masky, Pinhead appears as... What? And finally, Ghostface can be seen with a pumpkin-styled cape, although for this last one in a recent update, this has since been patched. This is because, as many of you may know by now, a lot of the older Sanctic killer models were not made by Homo Mafia 1. No, they were just made by, you know, bozos on the marketplace. They're free models, of course. And these free models... Well, they were built using questionable methods to say the least, not by, you know, the most amazing builders ever. Basically what the original model creators did is that they most likely constructed the killers by taking assets from another already existing model made by somebody else, and instead of deleting the textures that were on the old model, they just slapped new images over them and called it a day. Yeah, I know, it's super lazy. But yeah, like I mentioned with Ghostface Pumpkin Cape being fixed, most of these texture bugs should get patched eventually since they are actually errors and mistakes and aren't supposed to be in the game. Sanctic 2017 Hacking Incident Exploiters within Sanctic are annoying, although certainly manageable. Sure, they might use speed hacks or fly exploits to make the game unfun for about 10 minutes, but they usually swiftly get banned after turning on their cheats because, as we mentioned earlier, Sanctic does indeed have an inbuilt anti-exploit system that detects suspicious behavior. This wasn't always the case, however, as back in the older days of Sanctic, exploiters were capable of completely destroying servers and obliterating the map, making the entire game functionally unplayable. Keep in mind this is before Roblox added the infamous filtering enabled setting into every Roblox game, which if you don't know, patched a lot of well known and severe exploits and cheats that were commonplace back then. Now originally I was going to cover the video that you're seeing in the background right now, however looking at the destroyed map it doesn't seem all too that interesting, and it was likely caused by a simple exploiting script that simply unanchored every part of the Sanctic map, nothing too special. However there is one video 
video uploaded by my friend Brett in mid-2017 that shows one of these supposed quote-unquote hacking incidents, and what we find in the video is something that's very uncomfortable to watch. All the colors within the Sanctic map have been completely altered. Zombies now show up pink, the surface looks very odd, and even the blood shows up as some strange blue color. Now, in all my years of playing Roblox and Sanctic, I have never seen something like this before, and to my knowledge, this is the only video I can find on YouTube showing this exploit, if it is even an exploit to begin with. Now I know that some of you are screaming in the comments saying, Ash, what if Brett just, you know, swapped the colours in editing? I mean, it's very possible they could have, like, faked the whole thing. But I've actually spoken to Brett himself, and he doesn't know what happened either. You know, he just hopped into Sanctic one day, and the whole game was just weird, so he decided to, you know, record it. The more I watch the video, the more I get confused on what type of hack script could have caused something like this. It's certainly one of the strangest Sanctic videos I've ever watched. If there happens to be any Roblox developers watching this video, or anyone who knows a thing or two about exploiters, then please comment down below. Even if it's just a theory, I'd love to know what people think of this, and how it might have been caused perhaps. And speaking of exploiters... Ghost Mode 65. Now, before I say anything about this person, I just want to give a firm warning to any of you watching the video right now. Please do not go and harass this individual. You aren't doing the right thing, and you're just going to make my community look bad. Okay. But anyway, Ghost Mode 65 is, for those unaware, the most infamous and well-known exploit creator in Sanctic history, and has been developing hacking software for the game as early as 2020. Now, I'm not going to show any screenshots of these exploits for obvious reasons, but what they do include is Killer ESP, Infinite Ammo, Fly Hacks, and also Noclip. You know, common hack stuff. And according to Sanctic moderator HG Snaps, Ghost Mode 65 has reportedly been banned from Sanctic multiple times across many different accounts. As an added bonus fact, the Sanctic member and speedrunner who helped in the creation of this iceberg, Happy Sal, has apparently gotten in contact with GhostMode65, and is planning on interviewing him on why he creates exploits for Sanctic, which is pretty funny I must say. Anyway, sorry if this talk of Roblox exploits has gone on for a bit too long, you know, I just really wanted to express my thoughts and feelings about them, and you know, some of you might be asking right now on, you know, why I added GhostMode65 to the iceberg to begin with, and my response to that is, well, you know, Every iceberg's gotta have a spicy entry to it, even if it's just talking about Roblox exploiters. Yeah, that's the darkest thing you're ever gonna get out of this game. It's scarier than the killer's exploiters. 4391. If you thought this entry had something to do with the previously mentioned 81975 alien code that I mentioned earlier, then yes, you'd be correct. However, it goes a bit deeper than that. In fact, we don't even fully know if the code 4391 was even in Sanctic at one point. You see, if you scroll back far enough from Homo Mafia 1's inventory before the image of the 81975 code even existed, three images displaying the code 4391 can be found, each with the name Images Blood, Images Test 2, and images test 2 1 all uploaded on the same day, on the 4th of December 2015. Because of the similarities between the last 4391 decal image and the image for the 81975 code that was used in the game until that was eventually replaced by the modernized code system we have today, one pretty strong theory to believe is that the code 4391 was the original first ever code in Sanctum. However, only stuck for around 17 days before it was removed and replaced. Why the code was changed, we have no idea. I mean, maybe Hubbard preferred a 5 digit code as opposed to a 4 digit code so it's more difficult to remember or you know maybe the original code just didn't work for whatever reason I'm not sure However, surprisingly, there is another code within Homo Mafia 1's inventory that was uploaded much later than the previously mentioned 81975 code, which displays the number 794307, and has never appeared in Sanctic, at least to my knowledge. Again, I have no idea what this could have been used for, so again, please let me know of any theories you might have in the comments down below. God Mode Glitch Probably the most overpowered glitch in Sanctic history. The God Mode Glitch, like the name suggests, made you completely invincible from damage while it was in the game. Again, it doesn't work anymore in Sanctic today, as it evolved using the Invincibility Star Game Pass we mentioned all the way back on Layer 1. The first and easiest method of doing this glitch was to activate the Invincibility Star, walk into the radioactive area, and for whatever reason the game would display that you had no health, while also somehow still being alive. And because you had no health, 
health, killers could not damage you whatsoever. However, this first method of the god mode glitch came at a cost, as upon using it, yes you were invincible from damage, but you weren't able to shoot or use any guns. Unfortunately, I don't have much proof of this first method, as all I have is a video uploaded all the way back in 2019 that I've since privated showing the glitch, you'll just have to believe me, okay? The second method of the god mode glitch though was arguably much more overpowered than the first, as it also allowed you to shoot guns. The way of performing this method involved our good old pal Ghostface, yet the same guy responsible for the gun duplication bug we mentioned earlier on the iceberg. Now all we had to do for this method of the glitch was simply use the invincibility star, give Ghostface the item, kill Ghostface, pick up the item again, and bam, you become invincible from damage just like that. And again, you could use weapons with this glitch. Thankfully though, again, these glitches were patched as soon as the Sanctic community found out about them, so nobody could really abuse them in let's say killer mode or something like that. And I think these glitches even existing in the first place is just another factor or another reason on why the Invincibility Star is gone from the game nowadays. Missing rooms in Endless Survival. This entry isn't super obscure or anything, but the sheer mystery of it and the fact that I haven't seen anyone else discuss this topic makes it deserving to be on the fifth layer of the iceberg. Now again, if you see my Sactic Timeline video that I made a couple months ago, you'll know that we deduced that Endless Survival is the last canonical mode within the Sactic storyline. How do we know this? Well, the mode's name is literally Endless Survival after all, and because all of the rooms within all of the other modes also appear within Endless. As if you don't know, an easy way to figure out where a Sactic mode falls within the timeline is by looking for what rooms are present in it compared to other modes. For example, the tail stall or checkpoint area exists within classic mode, killer mode, endless mode, juggernaut mode, etc, but doesn't appear within storming mode. This means that it had to have been built after storming and thus proves that storming mode comes before classic, killer, juggernaut, endless mode, you get it. However, what I just said about endless survival having all of the rooms and locations from previous modes within it isn't exactly true, and there are actually some rooms that should be in endless but are for whatever reason missing. Notable examples include the Execution Room, the Secret Bunker Room, and the Wendigo Area, and all of the vents throughout Classic and Killer Mode. The entrances to these locations aren't boarded up or anything, no, they are straight up gone, as if they never existed. I'm pretty sure all of this is just an oversight by Homer, as the rooms I just mentioned wouldn't work in the context of Endless Survival. I mean, especially the vents, you could just camp in there forever and grind out points. But it does make the lore of the game a little inconsistent, so hey, maybe this will get changed in the future. The VIP Door The VIP Game Pass within Sanctic is one of the more popular, controversial, and overpowered passes in the game. What it does is that when you buy it, whenever you enter specific game modes, you'll instantly obtain all of the weapons within your inventory without having to look for them around the map, with certain exceptions of course. This wasn't always the case however, as when the Game Pass was first introduced into Sanctic, you actually had to go to a specific room found around the map to get your money's worth. This room could be found in the pack a punch hallway and once you enter the VIP door, you will receive all of the weapons. Supposedly. I say supposedly because I can only find one video in the entirety of YouTube that actually shows this VIP door still in the game, and the person in the video doesn't even go into the room, so sources are very limited here. Nowadays, it's pretty obvious on why this was changed. The VIP game pass exists so the players don't actually have to look around the map without, you know, finding all the weapons, they just get them in their inventory. And I don't know, it's just kind of counterintuitive to have the VIP door exist because it's also a location around the map, so kind of just defeats the purpose of the pass, so yeah, I'm very glad this was changed. I still believe the VIP game pass shouldn't be in killer mode though, but whatever, that's a discussion for another day. Sanctic Futuristic Area Sanctic Futuristic Area is a strange, mysterious game that can only be found in Hamamafi 1's inventory under the Places category, as the place in question isn't available on its profile page. Unfortunately, the game itself is private, meaning it's impossible to access, but what could it be? What's its purpose? Does it hold the long-lost Sector 2 map? Well, no, because the place was last updated in December of 2020, and it was created all the way back on the 21st of March 2019. A pretty good theory on what this place might be used for is that it's a backup map for either the Tailstone location or the previously mentioned Old Aberration area, as I feel both of those locations fit the description of a quote-unquote futuristic area, and it makes sense to hold them in a different game. As the developer, Subatomic Sam also helped build these maps, and usually when Homer makes new locations by himself, he just builds them in test servers. I would assume he doesn't need to create a whole new place. But anyway, that's just a theory. We'll probably never know what Sanctic's futuristic area truly is, but I think it's still fun to speculate. 
Sanctic 3 planned. If you remember early on the iceberg, I mentioned the forgotten Aerith Duong game Sanctic 2, which was created by SB Portula, one of Humber Mafia 1's friends. It was then later handed over to the player General Punctuation, in which the game itself hasn't really had an update since. However, during this change of ownership, both SB Portula and General Punctuation were actually working on a sequel to Sanctic 2, unofficially named Sanctic 3. However, their game was never fully completed. You see, after I made that video on Sanctic 2 a while ago, General Punctuation, the new owner of the game, actually came to me and told me about how him and SB Portola actually got pretty far into development of what they called Sanctic 3. Unfortunately, General only gave me three screenshots of Sanctic 3's map, however in the pictures that he did give me of the game, it actually looks pretty unique, and I start to get fairly excited, it seems like they made significant progress before abandoning the project. And hey, if either General or Portola are watching right now, I'd love a full tour of the map someday. Removed loading screen text. Loading screens are a mechanic within Sanctic that have been in the game since around mid-2021. They're essentially just screens that show up every time you teleport to a mode, to and from the main menu, and can list things like tips and tricks, trivia, or just general facts about the game. However, back when loading screens were first released within test servers of February 2021, there was one piece of text that appeared on the loading screens that has since been removed. It reads as follows. Hint. This is a very long text test to see if I can fix the mobile text bug. Yeah, it's pretty obvious why this loading screen text was removed from the game, but since Homer wrote this one in particular, it's still unknown what this mobile text bug was. Although this entry doesn't have a lot to it, it was in the test servers at one point. Dear Icy Fresh, if you recall on layer 1 of the iceberg, I mentioned how Icy Fresh was the original creator of the underground base map, which has since been gone on to be used in basically every single Area 51 game on Roblox. The underground base map itself is fairly normal, it's just an underground base of course, however within one of the rooms within the map, specifically opposite the room where the alien cone could be found in the main game, there exists a note on a desk titled Dear Icy Fresh, and reads as follows. Dear Icy Fresh, hey it's me, FireDart95, and I'm apologizing for getting on your account. All I did was make sure that your game got onto the top page, and to add a little something to your description. Sorry if you didn't like that, but I didn't take any money. Like I said, all I did was add something to the description, read a few private messages, and had you join the new Delta Force, Rain Block 6. Once again, sorry. Love, FireDart95. P.S. I accidentally spilled coffee on your carpet, XD. Well that's uh... Interesting story, um... Cool. But, uh, yeah, I don't really know who FireDart95 is, what he was doing on Ice Fresh's account to begin with, nor what the quote-unquote Delta Force is. But from the looks of things, Ice Fresh seemed to have liked the note enough to put it in his game. So that's something, I guess. In fact, this very note was in Sanctic at one point, albeit a very long time ago, and you can even find it in many other Roblox Air 51 games completely untouched. But yeah, that's about it, really. A cool little easter egg into the life of Ice Fresh, a Roblox user we still don't really know much about. I seriously wonder if he knows that his underground base map is probably the most stolen game in Roblox history. It's possible. Seconds a live leaderboard. The value of leaderboards within Sanctic heavily depend on the game mode that you're playing. Classic and killer mode both have killers kill, juggernaut and endless mode use points, etc. However, what you may not know is that for a couple of days when Sanctic was first released, there was a leaderboard known as Seconds Alive, which, like the name suggests, was based off how many seconds you were alive within that server. Now, I think it's pretty evident on why this leaderboard was removed. I mean, you could just sit on the surface and get as many points as you wanted, and they didn't save between servers, so... So, you know, didn't didn't really matter. You can you can do anything with the points. So, all those two people who actually miss it, probably not even two people. I don't think anyone saw this leaderboard. It's only in the game for a couple days, like I said. So, that's the seconds of life leaderboard. No one cares about it. The Russian Spy. A while back on the iceberg, if you remember, while I was discussing the existence of aliens within Air 51 Storming comparatively to the alien in Classic Mode, I briefly mentioned Alien's backstory on his case file, explaining that the reason why Alien is hostile in Classic Mode and not Storming Mode is because Alien in Classic Mode was brainwashed by a quote-unquote Russian spy to act the way he does. 
Now, this so-called Russian spy, who still doesn't have a name in the Sanctic lore, has never been mentioned anywhere in Sanctic beyond Alien's case file. So why do I bring this up again? Well, let's just say that maybe this so-called Russian spy has more significance to the Sanctic story than we first thought. Just think about it. So far, the Sanctic lore makes sense. We free all the aliens within Area 51 storming mode, one of the aliens gets captured and sent back to Area 51, supposedly, and is brainwashed by the Russian spy, leading him to be contained within Classic mode, only accessible via a special code. It's certainly a convenient explanation for the change in the alien's behavior, but that got me thinking. What if this so-called Russian spy not only brainwashed the alien, but all of the other kills within Area 51 as well? And I know this goes against half of the things I said in my Sanctic Timeline video, but I honestly think this theory might be plausible. Like, think about it. Do we really know why the killers are friendly in storming mode to the soldiers, but are aggressive in all of the other modes? Well, not really. Sure, we've had small hints here and there from certain papers found around classic mode, but nothing really concrete. Obviously, we don't have much more information on this Russian spy character, but who knows? They could play a significant role within Sector 2. I could see the Russian spy definitely being the mysterious entity. I mean, the mysterious entity kind of looks like a spy, so who knows? A special round. Sanctic VIP servers offer many benefits towards the server owner, as they are able to modify the games in ways the average player in a public server would not be able to. These benefits include special perks such as being able to change the background music, have the ability to do storming mode solo, and being able to set your starting round and number of players within Endless Survival to be any value you wish. Once again, earlier on the iceberg, we mentioned how this feature can be used to access round 666 more easily, and you can go all the way up to round 999 if you really want it. It's an easy and quick way to access access any round you want in the game. However, what isn't as well known is the limits of this Endless Survival starting round system. First discovered by Russell Sao in late 2022, if you type in NAN for the starting round, the game will display a... whatever this number is. But the quirks to this glitch don't stop there. Of course, that same ridiculous value shows up when you actually start the round, but not only that, killers will not spawn during this game, like ever. Every single round you encounter using this glitch will be a Hellhound round. No, I am not joking. Oh, and if you think you're smart and try to disable Hellhound rounds before the game begins, the round will just start and stop over and over and over again, which results in you basically being softlocked. And you want to know the worst part about this glitch? The round counter will never go up. Yeah, you're stuck here forever in purgatory. The only option is to leave the game. Now you might be wondering, how on earth is a glitch like this actually caused? And let me tell you, it's not actually Sactic's fault at all, but rather Roblox is doing. You see, the value NAN or NAN actually means not a number, and for whatever reason Roblox's coding language Lua interprets NAN as whatever this value is, which of course results in you being able to perform this bug within Sanctuk, and theoretically this could work in other Roblox games too. Well, any Roblox game that allows you to type a value in that is. But yeah, I recommend trying this bug out for yourself, or you need as a Sanctuk VIP server, and it likely won't get patched for a very long time, cause you know, it's not home his fault. But I must say, breaking endless survival and Roblox in general is pretty fun. Sanctic's original place. Now, some hardcore Sanctic fans may know that the first version of the game was published all the way back on October 20th, 2015, as it's mentioned within one of the game's loading screens. However, if you look back at the creation date of Sanctic, the place was actually made on the 29th of April 2014, the same day Homer created his Roblox account. This is because every single Roblox profile is a starting place for when you sign up, and Sanctic was indeed once Homer's starting place. He just overwrote it or something. However, what you may not know is what Sactic looked like during its creation date and its official release date, and all of the information I'm about to talk about comes straight from Homo Mafia 1, so this isn't made up stuff or anything, everything I'm about to talk about is 100% real. The very first version of Sanctic was a simple grass base play, and like I just mentioned, this is Homer's starting place, as back then in 2014, well, this is all Roblox gave you to work with is your starting place. Yeah, it's pretty boring. However, a month later, on the 16th of May 2014, Sanctic was changed to become... Inobi? Yeah, that's right, at this point I reckon Homer was just messing around within Roblox Studio, and originally wanted to create an obstacle course of some sort, albeit this one was never finished it seems. Another month down the line and Homer had changed Sanctic once again, this being a copy of the infamous slide down 999999 feet games on Roblox. I'm sure a couple of you have played those before. This is most likely because Homer was trying to copy what was popular at the time back then. I mean, hey, we all gotta start somewhere, right? The next version of Sanctic published three days after the slide 
upside down 9999999 feet game was made isn't anything special. It's literally an all blank place. Homer states that he most likely gave up at this point for unknown reasons, maybe because he just couldn't come up with any ideas or he accidentally deleted everything. Who knows? However, on the very same day, just a few hours later after he deleted everything, and probably my favourite version of Sanctic before Sanctic even existed, was that Homer wanted to create a Nintendo tycoon. This was because tycoons at the time were, once again, very popular, and Homer wanted to copy them, trying to follow popular trends. Homer would keep this Nintendo tycoon untouched for around the whole year, until changing the place once again. And this is where we see Homer take some interest from the horror genre on Roblox. Do you recognise this game? If not, it's actually a copy of Hospital Nightmare, a very old Roblox story horror game that was infamous, much like Area 51 games, for being copied, distributed, and stolen many, many times. Homer probably just took the map from a free model and once again tried to capitalise off of it. Yeah, Sactic really used to be a copy of Hospital Nightmare, it's kind of insane. But after that didn't work, of course, Homer turned to the Area 51 genre on Roblox. Sactic was born and the first version of the game was published on the 20th of October 2015. And this is what the surface originally looked like. And yeah, there are guns up here for some reason, not gonna question it. And that's just about where our story ends. From there, Homer went on and created the game we all know and love today. But yeah! That's the story of Sanctic. It was created originally as a cash grab. That's kind of funny, actually. Of course, it's not a cash grab anymore because the game has evolved so much and it's now the most popular uh, Area 51 game ever with over a billion visits. So, you know, it it's safe to say that Sanctic is much better than it used to be. So, yeah, that's the story of Sanctic. And now you're aware of it, too. Area 51 Test Area 51 Test is a theorized alternate account of Homer Mafia 1 that he supposedly uses to test new Sactic updates. The main reason why the account is theorized to be him is due to the fact that whenever the test servers update or are about to update, this is usually the account that is seen online, and very few interactions have actually been documented with it. Although, as a fun little coincidence, a couple of months ago while I was scripting this video, I actually managed to run into Area 51 test themselves within the Sanctic test servers. And uh, yeah, I killed them several times. Okay, then let me ask you what you would do if you saw Homer's ult in-game. However, what was most interesting about this interaction is that when they became a survivor, all they seemed to do was stand outside of the bathroom of Eyeless Jack's spawn, and they even let me kill them as Eyeless Jack. Perhaps because they're testing something? Hmm... Well, okay, maybe that's not enough evidence for you. I mean, this could literally be anyone. So what? They're testing killers and test servers. That's what YouTubers and players alike do all of the time. Well, there's mountains of more evidence that I'm about to share with all of you that will prove that this is Hammer Mafia 1's alt account. I feel like a conspiracy theorist right now, but stick with me. Now, let's just talk about the Area 51 test account itself. It was created all the way back on the 22nd of October 2015. Now, sure, this date at first doesn't seem anything out of the ordinary, but then you remember the day Sactic was first released, that day being on the 20th of October 2015, and now the pieces are starting to fall into place. Not only that, but I find it very interesting that an account created all the way back then would still be playing Sactic today. Like, it just doesn't seem right. Like, their name is Area 51 test, their account is over seven years old and they still play Sanctic, and Sanctic has Area 51 in their name, I, I, I just don't know. Now sure, it's not impossible that this is some random guy, it might be the most hardcore Sanctic fan ever, sure, but let's keep going. Moving on to Area 51 Test's inventory, and this is where you might actually start to believe me that this account is owned by Homer. Looking at the Game Passes section of Area 51 Test's inventory, you'll find only three passes, two of them being from, you guessed it, Sanctic, with the final pass also being made by Homer Mafia 1, for one of his other discontinued games known as Womp's Fortress. Now, isn't it a bit suspicious that the only game passes that this account owns were created by Homer? If this was a real account, wouldn't they have lots of other game passes, maybe? What's so special about Sanctic to them? And why do they still play the game to this day? And why do they buy a pass from one of Homer's other games that is now private? Anyways, moving on to the badges section of Area 51 Test's inventory, and once again, the first badges that they ever collected on Roblox are indeed Sanctic's badges. However, not only that, but the badges line up perfectly 
only in the order in which the badges were created for the main game. What do I mean by this? Well, Atomic Bomb was the first ever badge created for Sanctic, and conveniently it's the first badge in Air 51 Test's inventory. Attacker was the second badge added to the game, and oh look, it's the second badge in Air 51 Test's inventory as well, and so on and so forth. They also have the Mysterious Entity badge, so that's a thing. That badge is very difficult and confusing to get if you don't have YouTube tutorials, like my god. Still not convinced? Well, just take a look at the fact that Air 51 Test also has one uploaded audio to the account, created by the music artist Mayu, which if you remember all the way back on Layer 1 is, well, what do you know, the same music artist that created all of the tracks for the main menu screen within Sanctuk. Now yes, I know it's possible that Air 51 Test is again just a big fan of Mayu, maybe they listen to the Sanctuk main menu screen while they sleep or something like that, but it just doesn't add up with all of the other evidence we've been given so far. I mean, you know, their name is Air 51 Test, they play Sanctuk, it's got Air 51 in the name, they play test servers, so obviously they're aware of, you know, the Homer's stuff, they've, they've looked into Homer Mafia 1's account. You know, anyone who plays test servers obviously either watch YouTube, or, you know, they look into Homer Mafia 1's account and see his group, then find Sanctic test servers. So this isn't just some random, you know, random player that's just been playing Sanctic for six years. No, this person is dedicated. And, you know, it just lines up perfectly for this account being Homer Mafia 1. Now, at this point in the video, you're probably all wondering, well, this has to be Homer's secret alt account. However, there are just two tiny small things that keep me from that conclusion. For one, their friends list are full of the most random Roblox players. At least to my knowledge, they're random. Is this some way Homer's trying to cover up the fact that his account is his? Maybe, although I'm not really sure. And two, they have a lot of badges that aren't Sanctic related. Sure, the first badges that Air 51 Test ever obtained are from Sanctic, but I don't know, there are a lot of them that aren't as well. So how do I explain this? Well, I have a small theory, it's a bit of a long shot, but bear with me here. Perhaps Area 51 Test is indeed Homer's old account, but it's hosted on a different device, perhaps a different phone, a different laptop, or a different computer that he owns. Sometimes he just uses it to test Sanctic updates, like the interaction I had with him on test servers a while ago, and sometimes he just uses it to play random Roblox games without being disturbed or noticed. But what do you think? I'd love to get your guys' opinion on this. Am I going insane? I mean, probably, we've just gone through almost a hundred entries on this iceberg, about a Roblox game where you have to kill killers at Air 51 with fictional weapons. But yeah, leave your thoughts down below. Maybe one day home will confirm something. <sighs> and that was it. That was the Sanctic Iceberg. Oh my god, this video was long. Much longer than I wanted it to be. Of course, I probably missed a few entries and thanks, and I know I made a few errors in there, but can you really blame me? We just went through a lot of Sanctic content, and my computer is about to blow up because I have around 700 gigabytes of Sanctic footage, god help me. Thanks to everyone who stuck around, by the way. I get that this iceberg was really long, but uh, yeah, I hope someone out there at least learned a new thing about this Roblox game that I love so much. But yeah, I don't really want to drag this video on much longer. I mean, I've already taken up, I don't know how long this video is, maybe like an hour, 40 minutes of your time, you know? Go touch some grass, go get a girlfriend or boyfriend if that's what you prefer. Just go do something productive now. You, you deserve it, all right? I don't know, I don't know. Go, go do something. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go. I have no idea how to e end this video. I, I didn't even write anything down in my script, so. I'm gonna go take a rest and probably die, so if there's never another video from me, then you'll know, then you'll know the reason, so. Uh, Bye. Goodbye. See ya.